So my first putt's missed by a fair amount. Yeah. It's low side, mm -hmm. right? It's long. Even if we look at uh, the average make rate of that for a recreational golfer, it's not great. It's not impressive. No. So how do we actually go about this process of reading it? Okay. So, so, so aim point relies on understanding the amount of tilt you're putting across. We already know the stimp of this green. That's not going to change while we're here. And this isn't a particularly uphill or downhill putt. Yeah. So all we need to do is to feel the slope in certain places and, and rate them. Mm -hmm. So if you were to come and just feel the slope here, just literally stand there and just tell me which is your lowest foot. So your left foot's low, which means it's a right to left breaking putt. And now we'll come and measure it here. I'll stand this way. Yep, so it's okay. obviously that. Yep, yeah. so this is a right to left breaking putt. Mm -hmm. Now, which of these two was the biggest slope? Uh, I'll probably say the first one there. Okay, the first one. So if I come in here and I'm feeling a good two and a half percent, mm -hmm. which means we would play two and a half fingers. Yep. Okay, so two and a half fingers in this case would actually be a thumb and a finger. Okay. And my arm bend, the amount I bend my arm pertains to the, the stimp. Yeah. And these are things that you'd learn in the class. Mm. So you'd have to attend a class to understand feeling slopes. But okay. what people can do to start with is come in and just literally, which is their lowest foot? Yeah. Now, when you're feeling which is the lowest foot, is it a big slope or a little slope? If you're feeling a lot of side tilt, you're going to have to aim quite wide. Correct. If you're feeling not much, you can aim nearer to the hole. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've, you know, obviously my rating will be two and a half. So if I'm now going to come in here, I would put a T peg here for this putt. Yeah. So, so that's where you'd need to aim this putt. Based on with where you're at, because I, d I do definitely do a variation of this. Yeah. I, uh, I do mine a lot more through, I'm very visual golfer yeah, yeah. myself, right? So when I'm walking along, I'm always looking at the part of the putt yeah. that the ball's rolling mm. along. So I'm narrowing my focus, right? Yeah. Visually, and you can see for me that high point, low point, but in aim point, it's really, really beneficial to feel it with your feet, right? That's not well, right. To, be, to be fair, your eyes are going to be tricked. Mm. You know, exactly. you, you, visually, things around the green, shadows, yeah. what you see other people's balls do, they all affect the eyes. Now, we know that the average read is half of what's really there. So, so there is an alternative to yeah. seeing the curve. Yeah. Now, seeing the curve is a great strategy. Yeah. But what you'll find is, are you fairly comfortable with where that T-peg is there? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right, well, you know, that would be called a linear aim. Mm -hmm. So this would be, we aim at the T-peg, we hit the putt, gravity takes it towards the hole. Yeah. So linear aim would almost be where everyone sees every putt as a straight line to their aim point, yeah. and they just hit the putt. Yeah. Now what happens is, I see a lot of people set up to this and then hit the ball higher, oh, yeah. and the ball finishes near the T-peg. Yeah. Because they are what we call non-linear. Okay. So those are the guys that would benefit from seeing curves. Mm -hmm. And it's a bit like saying, if I said to you, hit a, hit a fade around that tree, mm -hmm. you would see a ball flight, like a Correct. shot tracer. Correct. You wouldn't say, right, my shoulders need to be 30 degrees left of that and the face needs to be yeah. one degree open. Yeah. You would see a, a line and yeah. you'd kind of feel the path and the face control to make that curve. Yeah. Non-linear would be that person. Okay. And a, another example would be football's non-linear. Mm -hmm. like the ball comes in, the player traps it, positions it, kicks it all in a second or two with an amount of curve to a player that's running yeah. with a fairly high delivery rate sure. in the professional game. That's non-linear. Mm. You know, it's like a decision made in a split second without too much focus on what shape is the boot, what's the time yeah. that bloke's going to be there. It's yeah. a reaction. Yeah. Uh, put the ball on a penalty spot, and it's now linear, yeah. and only three guys step forward. Mm -hmm. they're, all, they're all amazing footballers in the professional game, but it becomes a linear spot kick where they, they think about where their body is, they think about the angle they're coming in the ball, they think about the shape of the shoe, and they've got a target in mind. Mm -hmm. So, so non-linear would be the shot maker, yeah. or the artistry. Yeah. Strict linear would be you aim at that point, hit your pup, let grab to do the work. Yeah, I'm, de I'm definitely the former. Well, let me show you something because uh, I'm going to come in here now mm -hmm. and I'm just going to trace a line to my aim point and I've got a line to the hole as well, which creates yeah. a V shape. Yeah. And, and what we teach at aim point is how to predict curve. So this ball will roll over that spot there yeah. in this putt. Yeah. So is, that, is there a general rule of thumb for, I suppose it depends on the severity of the slope, right? But yeah. how far inside Absolutely, yeah. that Absolutely. T is? So that's the aim point. Yeah. Is this 
halfway the between apex or not is that the just apex. halfway well it's after the apex the apex would be about here the about thing it. about the apex is the apex shifts around a huge amount yeah and what we did was we used the aim point computer mm. to look for patterns and what we found is there's a very high concentration of the ball rolling over this area yeah now this is about 66 percent of the journey between the ball and the hole yeah, yeah. so what happens is at 66% of the journey between the ball and the hole, it's halfway between dead straight and the aim point mm -hmm. on just about every putt, yeah. which is amazing, right? Yeah. There's one area where you can almost guarantee where the ball will be. Mm -hmm. So we used aim point to find out where this is. Now, if we come and stand back here, and we're now looking at this putt, if you, and what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take this tee peg away now, okay? Mm -hmm. So if I move the pin out and take the tee peg away, how does that look to you? Well, you see, the thing is, is that with this, my eyes are instantly drawn to that to try and yeah. want to hit that, right? Mm. And yeah, I, I know I need to hit it a lot further yeah. down. Well, here's the thing, right? In my opinion, and from testing with players and working with players, we take the tee peg away because I don't care how well you aim at this stage at address. Yeah. I care about aim at impact. Yeah. Okay. So the, the, the trick here, well, not the trick here, but the, the, this most likely is someone with no line on the ball. Yeah, sure. And what happens is we test your ability to start it high enough to hit that disc at a speed of the hole. Mm. All right, so this person probably won't use a line on the ball. And once they've got their aim point, they don't become obsessed with that spot near the hole. Yeah. And what I find is when I show people the correct curve, most of them say that that disc is too low. Yeah. So visually it looks low, which tells us that the curve seers yeah. are also expecting it to be higher. Yeah. So we've got another double jeopardy. Yeah. People that like to see curve think it breaks more than it does. Yeah. People that like to aim near the hole also think it breaks less than it does. Mm. So it's quite an exciting area that we've kind of developed here because people have two patterns and sometimes they're, they're practicing the completely wrong one. Yeah, for sure. Totally wrong one. For sure. So now with you, mm -hmm. I would say that if you're a curve seer, we've used aim point to give us the drop point. Yep. And now it's a case of you rehearsing the, the stroke and the speed to roll through that. Mm -hmm. So I'd get you to stand about where you are now and kind of play that Tiger Woods 2000 and whatever it was. Yeah. The trace, know, yeah. The tracer. And, and, and then hit that putt. Yeah, okay. So we'll hit this putt and just, just kind of visualize the curve. You've got ball to disc to hole. Mm -hmm. And there's a thing called entry angle, which is how it enters the hole. Mm -hmm. But for now, start it right enough to roll through that disc at a speed of the hole. Give it a go and see what it does. There's a reason I'm not on tour, so let's see how we go. Well. That's good, just speed. Just speed, yeah. So, came off pretty good off the face. yeah, hit it harder. It hits the disc. It was low side of the disc. Mm -hmm. So you'd rather be right half of the disc, if anything. Yeah. Hit that harder and that's going in. Yeah. So that tells us two things. Yeah. First of all, your start line was manageable. Mm -hmm. If you can hit that disc- Manageable, with, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, your, your, your face control was within a, within a degree of perfect. Yeah, yeah. Okay, which is world-class. Okay. On that putt. On that putt, yeah. Um, small sample size. Small sample size. <laughs> if the player can hit that disc without me telling you where to aim, yeah. it means that you've got this creative yeah. start line. Yeah. You know, that flair, if you like. Mm. Um, so people that like to see curves, we've got to put the curve in the right place. Yeah, okay, okay. So um, with that one there, if we think about what you were saying, mm. really I'm looking to, to leave the ball about a foot past the cup. Yeah. That would have probably uh, just gone on the underside of the center line. It still probably may have just missed I think you could have made that putt. So what you find yeah. is when a putt misses low, yeah. it misses by a lot. Yeah. Because the high miss, if you miss high, you could, <laughs> we've done the maths on this, but it's it's like, three times as much. Yeah. Is this because it's sort of rolling further down yeah. gravity? Because it's because yeah. sort of, the over reads always moving nearer the hole yeah. and the under reads always moving away. Mm. You know, it, it could be as much as um, three times or four times the, the the miss value. Yeah. For example, if if you miss three inches high, yeah. the same miss low would be up to nine, ten inches. Perfect. Through the middle of the disc perfect speed <laughs> yeah i don't know it just it based on the way that i see a putt mm. and even though 
my variation of green reading at the moment is a combination of a mm. few different, mm. I would say experience. Yep. It's got a lot to do with it. Um, from what I know of Aimpoint, I've done a class, right? Yep. And I can see how beneficial it is for mm -hmm. students. Um, but that kind of just, it puts it all together yeah. where it just made it uh, very easy and gave me a bit of an, an idea and a system to follow, especially that last little bit there. Mm. And it just gave me a lot more confidence over time. Well, that's it. And if you, if you, if you want to visualize curves, mm. you've you got to measure to where the curve will be because otherwise it's just a guess yeah. you know the thing about visualizing curves it's just it's a story yeah now it, it's you, you can't measure it you can't we couldn't measure it before you couldn't tell someone how to change their curve value because it's a picture in their head mm. we can't adjust that mm. but now we can use aim point to give us drop point yeah and now you've just got to get that disc in the right place and you're good to go 